Now, you said something that I think is going to create questions, so I'm going to clarify it. You said uh, everyone accepts Jesus. You don't mean every single Jewish person accepts Jesus, do you? I do at the time of death. You're saying every Jewish person does accept Jesus at the time of death? Every yes, single one? Yes, appears to them. Okay. I have been accused of being anti-Semitic. I'm not anti-Jews. I condemned Hamas attacks on Israel. On October 8th, I posted on my community page, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is doing collective punishment. He is carpet bombing everything in Gaza, including hospitals and churches. Even wars have rules. Hospitals must be avoided. He is committing war crimes. I'm pro-life. I'm anti-abortion. I can't stand idly by when thousands of innocent babies are bombed and killed. I believe mass killings is part of the globalist depopulation plan. Today is Monday, November 20th, 2023, Thanksgiving week here in America. Colonel Douglas McGregor joins us now. Colonel McGregor, always a pleasure, my dear friend. Thank you for coming back to the show. Sure. So uh, last week, late last week and over the weekend, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces surrounded and destroyed uh, the major hospital in Gaza, telling us everyone ahead of time that uh, they would discover a Hamas command and control center underneath and catch Hamas fighters. It wasn't a control center and they didn't catch anybody. Is this a failure of intelligence or a deliberate uh, effort to destroy Gaza by destroying a hospital? <clears throat> Well, you know, Judge, uh, to sit here and speculate is probably pointless. We know what's true and what isn't. It didn't turn out to be what the Israelis anticipated or what perhaps they wanted to find. <clears throat> but in the meantime, the hospital is gone. And I think uh, that's a precursor for what's uh, coming across the boards. I mean, the idea is to now make it impossible for anyone to come back to Gaza who formerly lived there. I think that's that's the operation, and I think that mission is probably going to be accomplished. And the goal of the IDF is um, <clears throat> to extricate and save hostages or to make Gaza unlivable? Well, I think making Gaza unlivable is uh, the top priority, and that's not because they don't care about the hostages. They very much do. <clears throat> the problem is they don't have the the knowledge regarding where they are. It's, it's a tough situation to be in. In fact, I, I would argue that uh, they've been playing catch up from the 7th of October. The whole intelligence apparatus has performed very poorly. So that's that's where they are. I don't, I don't know that there's much more to say about it other than, you know, Gaza is going to be uh, flattened. Does the Israeli government not see that the IDF's continued massive cruelties uh, against civilians is likely to produce a regional war, which might very well be detrimental to Israel. <clears throat> well, what you're asking <clears throat> is whether or not the Israelis believe that uh, they could be the target of a regional war. In other words, that they would have to face uh, a whole series or a group of uh, capable opponents Right. I don't think they believe that. And I think this is one of the core problems. Just as we took the position early on, first of all, that the Russians would never invade Ukraine. Secondly, when they did, they didn't know what they were doing and they were in over their heads. Third, that they were incompetent and inept and could never recover from their alleged mistakes up front. And then finally, that the Russian economy was doomed and the society would collapse and revolt and remove... Uh, Putin, I think you have a similar phenomenon right now in, in Israel, in Jerusalem. I think the attitude is we're surrounded by mediocrities. <clears throat> they can't organize themselves. They're not capable. We just have to stay the course and get this job done. And we need to get it done quick uh, because we understand that uh, the support for us around the world will vanish. The longer this takes, the more hazardous it is for us. And they're betting very heavily on us, obviously, that we are their backstop and that our presence offshore 
and in the region with air and naval power will be enough to persuade the various actors in the region to do nothing, to stand by and watch the population of Gaza either killed or driven out of Gaza. Benjamin Netanyahu reckless bombings is infuriating the Arab world and causing Jews to be in danger. In multiple countries, furious Muslims hunt down Jews after seeing graphic videos of the atrocities unfolding in Gaza. When America collapses, which is just a matter of time, the Arab world will unite and attack Israel to avenge their Palestinian brothers and sisters, and then the Christian Zionists will say that the prophecy of Gog and Magog has been fulfilled. Keep in mind that Israel has nuclear weapons and will use them if they are losing a war. Kat Kerr, enormous support for the nation of Israel, leads her to teach that Jews are so special that they will get a second chance to accept the Lord Jesus Christ after they die. So according to Kat Kerr, Jews can live unsaved sinful lives and not worry about salvation because they get a second chance after they die. No wonder why they are bombing thousands of babies and American Christians support it. The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27 that it's appointed for men to die once, then comes judgment. Yes, he talked to me a lot during that whole trip in, in Israel. Of course, you know, it's a land he loves, the people, of course, he loves. Um, he loves all of us. That is so true. Yeah. But there's something special about Israel. And they were the first people, the Jews. That's why they're so persecuted and hated by the devil, because they do represent that there is a real God. And, uh, of course, and one of the questions I recently got sent in the mail actually asked me, so if the Jews are God's chosen people, do they still have to accept, accept Christ as their Savior, or do they get like a free pass into heaven? Oh, everyone accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, they are all going to accept him. He is the only way to cleanse all of your sins and give you entrance into heaven. I thought I'd throw that out there for free. But Jesus can talk to people. Probably most of the time he is. But it's where, is your, where are you in the spirit? Are you really listening? Are you giving time to him more than an hour a week? Or, you know, whatever no, you time you pray for your blessing. Or you're on the, in church, so you're praying there. Do you pray any of the time? And I want you to know prayer is conversation. That's what the Father calls it. That's what Jesus calls it in the Holy Spirit. This is conversation. And they love it that I have conversation with them almost nonstop. So Christ absolutely did say, this is where I lay. This is where I rose from the dead. And uh, I was excited to hear what he was, the revelation he was giving me as I was in each of these places. He was giving me revelation at That's each good. one of those places. So do, do you now you said something that I think is going to create questions. So I'm going to clarify. You said uh, everyone accepts Jesus. You don't mean every single Jewish person accepts Jesus, do you? I do at the time of death. You're saying every Jewish person does accept Jesus at the time of death? Every yes, single one? appears to them. Okay. Well, that, I hadn't heard that. But not every single human being accepts Jesus. at the. No, but so many people have a chance. They're even given a chance. And yeah. it has to do with the keys. This is not one of the keys. But it's a good example that he, Christ, took the keys of hell death in the grave those are doors that that key opens and that, that gives christ the ability if someone's standing for someone's salvation it says there's a point on the man wants to die and then the judgment like when you die there is a decision made are there someone standing for their salvation is there someone standing who's righteous for somebody praying for them believing for them does that give him the right to use that key that at that time of death he has that permission from God to appear to that person. I've said it many times, but a lot of people still don't understand or haven't heard. That's why it was so devastating to hell that he took those keys away and Satan no longer has those keys. And that Christ has the right now. He and This is his, what he said to me. The first time he took me to heaven and talked to me, he said, when you go back, please tell them those people just not ever stop praying for their family. It gives me the right to use the keys, which he was wearing at that time. Really? When I was with him in heaven, he was wearing the keys. And he said, I have the right to use these keys because of their prayers. I can't let their words drop to the ground. And it says in the word is a point on the man wants to die. And then at that moment, when you die, there's a decision or they said, there's a judgment, a judgment, a decision, whatever you want to call it. Does Christ have the right to use that key 
of mm. death to mm. enter to them, go before them when they moment, that second they die, and ask them, do you want me now? And we may get some flack from this. That doesn't matter to me because I know what he said. And I've heard testimonies of other people that he actually did appear to them when they died. Mm. And, and he did say that. Do yeah. you want me now? Because you have this person. He would actually show them the person who is praying for them and said, they have stood faithfully for you. I cannot refuse their words. I can't let their words drop to the ground. So here I am now. Do you want me now? Hey, Internet friends, to speak about Israel and the extreme Zionist influence over our government is a discussion that should really be taking place, but is muffled by accusations of anti-Semitism. Often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. Which is funny because by definition, a Semite is a member of any of the peoples who speak or spoke a Semitic language, including in particular the Jews, and the Arabs, and I can, with impunity, criticize the rest of the Middle East, who are also Semites, because the definition of anti-Semitism only refers to the prejudice against Jews. But I totally get it. Up until very recently, I believed that anyone who questioned Israel was a neo-Nazi. Back in high school, I attended this church where they'd passed the plate around the congregation, once for donations to the church, and a second time for Israel, the holy land of God's oppressed but chosen people, the patriarchs and the prophets of the Old Testament. But I digress. I get the sense that a lot of you who watch this channel are Christians, so maybe you've shared in my experience of Christian Zionism. Maybe you still subscribe to that belief system and you'll find this video incredibly offensive. I recommend you crack open the Talmud, the cornerstone of rabbinical education, which calls on Christians to be harmed both directly and indirectly. But I'm sure I'll have someone comment saying the mere fact that I brought up the Talmud is anti-Jewish slander. It's old religious fanaticism. And since I'm not Jewish, I couldn't possibly understand the laws that are written and quote them in context. But on the flip side, we can bring up any other religious texts like the Quran and pick it apart with virtually no repercussions. The time is drawing near when the window of opportunity to speak freely will eventually vanish. In some parts of the world, there are laws and consequences for anti-Semitic speech. And day by day, the internet is becoming more and more censored for those of us who just want to know the truth about the Middle East. And in doing so, we have to take Israel into consideration because they're part of the Middle East. And to further that problem, Israel has hired university students to post pro-Israel messages on social media networks without needing to identify themselves as government linked. I came here to learn more about how um, we as Israelis and as Jews can defend Israel online, on the internet, and particularly in Wikipedia in this case. Wikipedia is a bit of a complex system and it's sometimes hard to figure out the rules. I've personally tried to edit things um, in Wikipedia that were against Israel. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> We can do a variety of things if we wish to increase the pressure. I'm not advocating that. Have you ever heard about the day Israel attacked America, also known as the USS Liberty Incident of 1967? During the Six-Day War, 34 American servicemen were slaughtered and 173 more were wounded after Israeli forces repeatedly attacked USS Liberty in international waters. The Liberty was not a battleship and was entirely unable to defend itself. For decades, the US government threatened survivors with jail if they spoke about it and kept the truth from the public. 
Survivors of the attack have long maintained that Israel intended to kill the entire crew and sink the USS Liberty as a means of scapegoating the blame for the incident onto Egypt. But why would Israel want the US to believe that Egypt was responsible for the attack? It's a classic false flag, right? Shifting the blame for an incident as a means of drawing the president or the US public into declaring war on Egypt. Well, Israel claims that this attack was done in error. Audio evidence confirms that the Israelis knew the identity of the ship as an American vessel. Furthermore, did you know that Israel has nuclear weapons? In 1986, an Israeli whistleblower and former nuclear technician revealed that Israel had amassed a secret stockpile of nuclear weapons. This whistleblower spent 18 years in prison after revealing classified information and in 2014, a lawsuit was filed against U.S. charities that funded Israel's secret nuclear weapon program. I don't know all the facts. I don't think we all know all the facts, but I was deeply concerned that uh, this could have been, um, uh, you know, another cons uh, organized, highly organized attack on the country. And it still may be. I, again, I don't know the facts, but I do know that it's really hard to protect the homeland. What has the media told us about 9-11? Before the attacks, there were many stories coming out about Israeli espionage on the United States. Did you know about the Israeli art students who occupied two entire floors of at least one tower? Did you know about the Israelis arrested on 9-11? Did you know that at the time, Mossad had an urban moving company as a front? They were seen by New Jersey residents on September 11th, seemingly celebrating the fall of the World Trade Centers and photographing themselves in front of the wreckage. These men were caught by police, held for questioning, and quickly sent back to Israel by the United States government. So did Mossad know about the attack on the Twin Towers before it happened? Did they have a crew ready to film it? What do we actually know? Very little, because it's anti-Semitic to bring it up. What has the media told you about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Israel has successfully wanted to prove to the world that it is an innocent victim of the Palestinian violence and terror, and that the Arabs and Muslims have no other reason to be in conflict with Israel except for an irrational hatred of Jews. And most of what we see on the news is Palestine as the aggressor and very little of how Israel responds. And don't get me wrong, Israel has a right to defend themselves from attacks, but for over five decades now, they have killed Palestinians with impunity. There seems to be a hierarchy of death propagated in our media, and when we see certain groups of people, as less than other groups of people. That's when the injustice occurs, unchallenged and leaving room for prejudice to fester. An example of this would be Israel's use of white phosphorus targeting densely populated areas of Gaza. So this is uh, basically something that is mandatory, that every congressperson has to sign saying that, what, Jerusalem, you said, is the capital of Israel, and what else? Uh, uh, you make a commitment that you will vote to support the military superiority of Israel, that um, uh, the economic assistance that Israel wants, that you would uh, vote to provide that. What have you learned about ISIS from the media? I've learned that ISIS has attacked the USA. ISIS has attacked France. ISIS has attacked the Philippines. ISIS even boasted that they were going to destroy Kaaba in Mecca. But ISIS doesn't attack just around the corner Israel. I guess they would rather attack distant countries. In 2015, Syrian President Assad spoke about the connection between ISIS and Israel. He responded for the first time to an airstrike attributed to Israel, saying it's very clear that Israel supports the rebels because whenever we make advances in some place, they attack in order to undermine the army. That's why some in Syria joke, how can you say that Al-Qaeda doesn't have an air force? They have the Israeli Air Force. Even as early as this morning, a Syrian UN envoy claimed that Israel was directly supporting ISIS by bombing regime sites. There have been claims made that Israel is the largest buyer of ISIS oil, but whenever I search for sources to 
verify or debunk this claim. All I find are long rants on anti-Semitism. In 2015, NATO said it wouldn't send ground troops in to fight ISIS. Is it because ISIS is actually our ally and the goal is to overthrow Assad in Syria and install a Israel and United States friendly puppet government instead of the Russia Iran puppet that's currently in place? I'm just really, really confused. Israel can stop ISIS, but they can't stop people from throwing rocks at them. Is that, do I have it right? I'm just really confused because in order to have clarity on something, one must have answers to their questions. And in order to get answers to your questions, it must first be acceptable to ask them. When I see things like evidence and the money trail to support that my government is acting like a cheap whore, selling out to the highest bidder, it makes me think that we'll never find anything that remotely resembles peace. As long as the wolves among people are above the law. Thank you so much for watching Matthew 7:15 YouTube videos. If you like these videos, subscribe and share. I'm trying to pass Kenneth Copeland and Sid Roth and subscribers to show that truth wins over false teaching.